Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. If this show's about anything, it's about the anomalies out there. Vanadium is focused on the surprising and counterintuitive aspects of science and reality to keep things interesting and keep scientists guessing. PVDF, or polyvanillidine fluoride, is an aberration. Years ago, I became interested in this very unconventional plastic and it ended up becoming the subject of my PhD thesis in material science at UPenn. PVDF looks just like regular plastic, similar to the polyethylene making up a disposable water bottle. It's tough stuff and you can process, form it, and make things out of it the same way you would regular plastic. It's not the way PVDF looks that makes it so special. It has a hidden talent. It's ferroelectric, and with its corresponding sister talent, it's piezoelectric. This stuff doesn't conduct electricity. There are a bunch of conventionally electrically conductive plastics out there that can do that. Ferroelectric and piezoelectric materials do much more than that. PVDF is different. It doesn't just conduct electricity. It stores it in its structure, like a spring stores mechanical energy. When a voltage or electric field is applied, the molecular chains in the plastic move and align themselves according to positive and negative. Shift the voltage and the PVDF changes orientation and dimension. If you shift it back and forth quickly, you can make the plastic deform, vibrate, and even make sound. PVDF can be made into speakers. Plastic is normally inert, composed of long spaghetti string molecules of carbon and hydrogen all wound up together into a tangled and knotted mess. Regular plastic is a solid in the loosest sense of the word. When a plastic goes from liquid to solid, not much really changes. These spaghetti strings are just wound up so tightly that they can no longer move and flow past one another. So the plastic acts like a solid. So what makes PVDF act so differently from a regular plastic? What makes it electric? Ferroelectricity, or piezoelectricity, results from an imbalance of electrical charge in the material that comes down to the molecules themselves. In a conventional plastic like polyethylene, carbon is strung together with hydrogen along polymer chains. With PVDF, half of these hydrogen atoms get replaced by fluorine. With this substitution, something strange happens. An imbalance is introduced, a disturbance in the force. Hydrogen and fluorine are very different atoms with very different electronegativities, which is another way of saying different strength in their ability to attract electrons. The hydrogen and fluorine sitting across from one another result in an electrical imbalance in this chain. The fluorine is sucking up all the negative charge to one side stealing it from the hydrogen side. If these chains are stacked up in one orientation, in one direction, as they would be in a material, all these small stored shifts in electric field can add up to millions of volts and create a very electric plastic. PVDF is a semi-crystalline polymer, meaning the molecular chains will line up in a partially orderly way. That's how these individual chain voltages can really add up to something major. Materials like this form a special kind of crystal called a spherolite. Think of the spines of a sea urchin, which would be the crystalline part or lamella of the material. PVDF is typically 50 to 60% crystalline with the material surrounding the spherolite spines being softer, glassy, amorphous or disordered. Most ferroelectric or piezoelectric materials like this are inorganic, hard, crystal or rock-like. Materials like Rochelle salt, barium titanate, and PZT, or as it's otherwise called, lead zirconate titanate. These are very exotic, specialized ceramic materials used in batteries and transformers. A soft plastic with the ability to store lightning is a strange thing indeed. So where did PVDF come from? It's really a tweak of the novel polymer Teflon, something stumbled upon accidentally in April 1938 by an American scientist named Roy Plunkett. 
About 10 years later, the DuPont Corporation realized there were potentially even more promising derivatives and they wisely patented the chemistry behind this souped up Teflon in 1948. At first, no one realized PVDF had a hidden superpower. Since then, it's been used for its strange electrical properties for all kinds of applications like sensors and batteries. In the case of sensors, thin films of PVDF are used in some of the newer thermal imaging cameras. In the same way that a voltage can create a physical dimension change in PVDF and make it actually vibrate, it's possible to do the opposite. Even very small thermal and mechanical changes result in alterations of the electric field in the material or the voltage, which can be measured. Because of this, panels composed of PVDF are used in the sensitive dust particle counter on the New Horizons space probe that measures dust density in the outer solar system. Even the tiniest impacts can be detected and measured as voltages with PVDF sensors. Even if PVDF didn't have this amazing electrical trick up its sleeve, it would still be used across the world by the megaton because it's also tough, useful stuff. It's well known as a highly inert, non-reactive thermoplastic material. Thermoplastic just means a material that can be melted back into a liquid, then cooled and reformed. In the polymer world, this is in contrast to a thermoset material like a rubber that can't be reliquified and reformed. Once a thermoset forms, it's locked into that shape. PVDF can be melted and molded over and over again. It's used in applications requiring the highest cleanliness and purity, as well as when a plastic needs resistance to solvents, acids, and hydrocarbons. It's available in the form of sheet, tubing, films, and plates. It can also be injection molded. It's commonly used in the chemical, semiconductor, medical, and defense industries, as well as in lithium ion batteries. It's also sometimes used as an exotic 3D printer filament. Certain grades of PVDF are FDA compliant and can even be used in contact with food products. It's very non-toxic below its degradation temperature. Although, you really don't want to smoke PVDF. The byproducts are a bit of a buzzkill. PVDF resin has been subjected to high heat experiments to test its thermal stability. It was held for 10 years at 302 Fahrenheit or 150 C, and subsequent measurements showed no thermal or oxidative breakdown in the material. PVDF resin has also been recorded stable up to 707 degrees Fahrenheit or 375 degrees C in short bursts. So as long as you don't get it too hot, you'll be safe with PVDF. It has been used as an ingredient in paints for applications requiring exceptionally high gloss and color retention. PVDF paints are used on many prominent buildings around the world, including the Petronas Towers in Malaysia and Taipei 101 in Taiwan. PVDF is a case of a material with a hidden aspect, like an unknown superpower that eventually gets realized, developed, and harnessed. It's a molecule with a built-in capacitor due to its imbalanced structure, its lopsided lobes of fluorine and hydrogen. It's both an actuator and a sensor, a speaker and a microphone. PVDF is molecular nanotechnology, or as I sometimes think of it, a machine within a chemical. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.